Hello, thank you for listening to this video. My name's Karen Rees and I'm the sales manager at Talis. What I'd like to do today is just spend a few minutes talking to you about Talis Bridge um, and also the Talis approach to uh, integrating with self-service machines. So the agenda for today is really just a little bit of integration about how um, Talis Bridge has been used to integrate and a little bit of history around that. A little bit about our solution which is Talis Bridge and the two versions of that which is Talis Bridge Lite and Talis Bridge Pro. Then what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit of the collateral that we have that we use with our customers. So a little bit of history first of all as you can see from this slide which is shows that the way that um, Talis Bridge has evolved over a period of time. We started off using just the basic SIP2 server then we migrated from that and we developed that and produced something called Talis Self Serve. That has then evolved and moved on so now that we have Talis Bridge and we have two versions of that Talis Bridge Lite and Talis Bridge Pro. So that's a little bit about the history and how that's worked but what is Talis Bridge? Well, in a nutshell, it's the link between the self-service machines and the library management system. As you can see from the screen, the uh, Talis Bridge provides borrowers with meaningful messages during transactions, including items waiting for collection, uh, reserved items, still in process, etc, etc. So it brings all the circulation functionality that you normally get in the uh, library management system to the self-service machine. So that's it in a nutshell, but as I've mentioned, there are two versions of Talis Bridge, it's Talis Bridge Lite and Talis Bridge Pro. So to explain a little bit about what Talis Bridge Lite is first of all, basically that's stalled, installed on the library management system server and will link to the self-issue machines and it includes the following, so information regarding overdues, recalls, reservations, waiting collection, uh, reserved items not yet available etc etc. So as I said before it's all that, that circulation functionality but also what it will do as well is it'll do things like calculate higher charges, it'll, put, uh, it'll work out any fee payments that there are so there can be fines payments made through it. It also has in it support for sorters so if you have a um, customer who has a bin sorter there is support for that to be able to ensure that it goes to the right area for reshelving. It'll also quite crucially and a lot of customers have started to use this it'll allow items to be issued from the reservation shelf so that the, what that means is it means that libraries don't have to have a staffed reservation shelf they can have an unstaffed one and it's Talis Bridge Lite that allows those messages to be um, transmitted from the machine uh, and put to the correct borrower. Finally also what it does allow is allow the library to customise those messages to make them meaningful for that particular library, that particular borrower etc. So it's using their own terminology and that's all encapsulated within Talis Bridge Lite. That's been working now for probably we've had that operational for around about two years, Talis Bridge Lite, and we have a large portion of our customer base already using it. But what we found was that there was a, a requirement from customers to extend the uh, version of Talis Bridge uh, Lite. So we developed Talis Bridge Pro, and the main difference for that really is an offline functionality. So that if that connection that I've just described is missing for some reason, it means that the uh, software where can store the um, transactions that are ongoing then when when the connection is is then restored to the the database to the library management system those transactions are then passed back via that connection without the library actually having to do anything so if you like what it's doing is it's sitting in the background storing up those transactions and then polling to see when the database is back, when it's back it will automatically download those transactions. So it, it means that libraries can have that 24-7 availability of the self-service machines and the surety that it will be there when it's needed. We've seen increasingly that more and more customers are, are starting to like the idea of this and like the insurance as they're becoming to rely more on the self-service uh, self machines to be able to provide that circulation transaction that I've described. So that's the main difference with Talis Bridge Pro. The other features include things that we're going to add into development, including things like a monitoring and alerting system for availability and an interface for customers to be able to, to customise Talis Bridge Pro for themselves. So if you look on the screen here now, this is linked to uh, our website, which has the details of the collateral that we use for customers on this. So as you can see here, there are case studies and there are product briefs and descriptors about how Talis Bridge Pro works for our customers. 
So in conclusion, really, Talis Bridge, there are two, as I said, there are two flavours of um, Talis Bridge. There's the light and the pro version. It's now well established within the um, Talis customer base. We have over 40% of our customers using um, the connector, so that means 40% of our customers have these self-issue units. Um, we believe that the two versions of that uh, provide customers the choice as to the functionality that they require. So it depends which, which version they want. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I hope you found it useful in terms of describing our approach uh, to self-service and integrating with self-service. If you have, have any questions, please feel free to email me at the email address below. Thank you. Thank you.